Chapter three. In this presentation, you will learn about integrated pest management and non-chemical methods for managing pests. Integrated pest management, or IPM, is an approach to managing pests that combines or integrates several different types of management methods. Many of the methods that can be used don't involve pesticides. These include good cultural practices such as selecting pest-resistant plants, or using proper irrigation or fertilizing practices. Other non-chemical approaches include biological control, or using beneficial insects to eat pests, and mechanical or physical controls such as pruning out or trapping pests. Pesticides can be part of IPM programs, but least toxic pesticides are chosen and are used only when they're necessary. By reducing reliance on the most toxic pesticides, IPM programs protect people. And the environment. One of the keys to a successful IPM program is taking steps to prevent potential pests from causing serious problems. Regularly check the landscapes you manage. Know what pests commonly occur, and keep an eye on plants and locations that often have problems. Keep written records of what you find. For instance. Wet areas under a drippy faucet or sprinkler head can support nut sedge or other weeds. Standing water under a tree can promote root disease. Certain plants, such as rose bushes, often have problems. Keep a special eye on these. Check mulches under plants to be sure they're thick enough and weeds aren't growing through. Thick ground covers may support rats or snails and earwigs. And ants crawling up the trunks of trees may be tending honeydew-producing insects. Maintaining healthy plants is the basis of an integrated pest management program, as well as the foundation of a sustainable landscape. A first step is planting hardy plant species or varieties that are pest-resistant or pest-tolerant. Some of these may be special cultivars that have been specifically selected to be less damaged by pests, but other pest-tolerant plants, including many California native plants, have less problems to begin with because they're well adapted to the California environment. Maintenance gardeners usually manage already established landscapes. However, when a plant needs to be replaced, you may be able to suggest a pest-resistant species to replace it. Maintaining a vigorous lawn is the key to preventing turf pest problems. A healthy lawn should be able to outcompete weeds and resist most other pest invasions. Keep the lawn vigorous by planting or overseeding turf species that are adapted to the growing conditions, and irrigating, fertilizing, and mowing properly. Many lawns are over-irrigated, predisposing them to disease or dieback. Lawns watered in evening are more likely to develop certain diseases than those watered around dawn. Fertilizing lawns is important for promoting health. But too much fertilizer can injure lawns or increase pest outbreaks. It is essential to mow lawns at the right height. Mowing grass too short can weaken the turf and increase weed invasions. Grass mowed too high can allow weed seeds to develop and reduce the aesthetic appearance of the lawn. As this chart shows, the proper height varies with turf species. However, Usually, cutting off about one third of the blade is about right. Many of the maintenance activities you carry out in landscapes can have an impact on pest problems. Pruning is a good example. Improper pruning can damage plants and provide entryways for pests such as borers and wood decay fungi. Correctly prune trees when they're young to minimize the need to remove large limbs later. Never top trees. Topping leaves stubs and large open wounds that can allow pests to invade. 
For smaller limbs, remove the branch just outside of the branch bark ridge by making three cuts, as shown in the center picture here. For larger limbs, use the drop crotch pruning technique, shown at right, again using the three-cut method. Several mechanical or physical control tools are useful for managing weeds. Hand hoes are useful for cutting out annual weeds in planting beds, but are not effective against perennials. Grassy annuals must be cut off below the soil surface to prevent new sprouts. Weed trimmers can be used to mow grasses or other tall vegetation around trees and shrubs. Cut weeds before they flower and set seeds, and protect young trees with plant guards. Flaming using propane burners, is useful for killing young weeds. However, be careful around dry plants or mulch because flamers can start fires. Headers are 8-inch or more deep barriers placed between turf and planting beds. They keep lawns and lawn weeds from growing into the planting bed. Mulches are one of the easiest and most effective ways to manage weeds in many landscapes. Mulches control weeds by limiting light, which is required for weed establishment. Mulches also conserve water, prevent erosion, and are aesthetically pleasing when properly maintained. Many materials can be used. Bark chips are among the most common. Organic bar mulches like bark or wood chips or compost or non-organic materials like rock can be applied directly to a weed-free planting bed, or they can be applied on top of landscape fabric. Landscape fabrics topped with other mulches can prevent weed problems for four years or more. Organic mulches need to be reapplied regularly. If applied alone without landscape fabric, two to four inches should be applied and then reapplied at least annually to prevent weed invasions. Biological control is the use of living organisms to manage pests. Biological control agents that attack insect pests are called natural enemies. Natural enemies may be predators, such as the assassin bug or the predatory mite shown here. Predators are little hunters that catch and kill many pests in a lifetime. Other natural enemies are parasites. Tiny parasitic wasps lay their eggs inside pests, and the wasp larvae that hatch from these eggs kill the pests. Insect pests may also be attacked by fungal or bacterial diseases or nematodes. The lawn grub in this picture has been killed by nematodes. The convergent lady beetle is one of the most common predators in landscapes. Both the adult and larva of the lady beetle feed mostly on aphids. These pictures show the life cycle of the lady beetle from egg to larva to pupa and adult. Green lacewings are another common predator. Lacewings feed on many different types of pests, including aphids, white flies, caterpillars, psyllids, and eggs of many insects. The larva is the stage that does most of the feeding on pests. Adults of most lacewing species feed on nectar and honeydew rather than pests. Surfid flies are important predators of aphids. The adult flies feed on pollen and nectar and are often found on flowers. They look a little like bees or wasps and have a hovering style of flying that gives them the name of hoverflies. The larvae look like small caterpillars, but they don't have legs and their bodies taper to a point at the end. You will often see them on rose plants feeding on aphids. Some people mistake them for caterpillars, but they do not feed on plants. The surfed fly larvae pictured here is bright green, but other species may be duller and brownish. Parasites are very important in keeping aphids and many other insect pests below damaging levels in many landscapes. This diagram shows the life cycle of an aphid parasite. 
first, the adult female parasitic wasp lays an egg inside the live aphid. Then the egg hatches into a parasite larva that grows as it feeds inside the aphid. After killing the aphid, the parasite pupates in the body of the dead aphid. And then, after pupation, an adult wasp emerges and flies off to mate and parasitize other aphids. When aphids are parasitized, their dead skins turn into a crusty brown or black mummy. You will often see aphid mummies on plants that have had a lot of aphids. This is a sign that biological control is occurring, and pesticides are probably not needed. There are very few natural enemies that are available for purchase, and generally, purchasing and releasing natural enemies is not recommended. Although there is a few exceptions, the most important way you can take advantage of biological control in the landscapes you manage is by protecting natural enemies and enhancing their activities. Three main ways of enhancing natural enemies will be shown here. One important way is to manage ants that are protecting aphids or other honeydew-producing pests from their natural enemies. Many times, you'll see a long line of ants crawling up a tree to a colony of aphids, mealybugs, or scales. If you can keep the ants away, often the natural enemies will control the pests. Most parasites and many predators, like surfeit flies, will live longer and lay more eggs if they have a source of food and shelter, such as plants that produce nectar and pollen. Certain types of plants are known to be good sources of food for natural enemies. The most important way to protect natural enemies, however, is to avoid using insecticides that kill them. Choose insecticides that are least toxic to natural enemies. Certain pesticides are known to be highly toxic to natural enemies. These include the pyrethroids such as permethrin and bifenthrin, carbolor seven, and the organophosphates including malathion and acephate. Imidacloprid, bare advanced or bare, is also highly toxic, especially on flowering plants. Avoid using these insecticides whenever possible. Less toxic choices that protect natural enemies include Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis for caterpillars, or insecticidal oils or soaps for aphids, whiteflies, scales, mites, and other soft-bodied insects. A water spray is also a good alternative in some situations. Pyrethrin and spinosad are moderately toxic to natural enemies and are good choices when the less toxic choices aren't effective. Pesticides are important components of IPM programs, but it's essential to choose ones that will cause the least harm. More information on choosing pesticides will be presented in the next section of this course. Learn about resources you can use to make good management decisions for IPM programs. The University of California IPM website contains information on how to manage hundreds of landscape pests and weeds. You can choose from a list of plants to find management information on pests specific to each plant. The website also includes a comprehensive guide for managing healthy lawns with a minimum of pesticides. The University of California also has several books that will be useful to maintenance gardeners who must make management decisions. Order these from the University of California A and R catalog, or purchase them from your University of California Cooperative Extension office. This is the end of the presentation for Chapter Three: Integrated Pest Management. This would be a good time to review the sample exam questions and workbook exercises for this chapter.